Here I am in Tesoro Escondido Reserve in Western Ecuador. It's one of my favorite places on earth, but I haven't been here in a few months. I'm psyched to be back. I'm gonna see some good friends, observe wildlife, and I'm also gonna help Sitlali, my friend who runs the reserve, to establish a reptile and amphibian photo guide. It should be fun, but right now I should go because it's getting dark. We arrived about two hours ago. Um, we had dinner, a nice cold beer. Uh, honestly, right now I'm just too tired to look for wildlife, so I think I'm just gonna go to bed. And uh, tomorrow should be a fun day. We're gonna go for a nice long walk in the forest, see what we can find. But for now, time for bed. We're right next to the house, and there's a hummingbird nest right there. There's two of them in there, it's extremely cute. You can see the, the beak and the tail sticking out of the nest. We haven't even left the house yet, and we're already observing some very cool wildlife. There's an anolis right there. It's a tropical lizard. It's beautiful, it's bright green, and it, it lives on that tree here. Uh, Sitlali tells me that it shows up every day. I'm gonna take a few pictures, and then we're going to the forest. We just found spider monkeys. 
We just started walking only 10 minutes ago. We heard them, there's a group of about four of them maybe. They're quite high up, but, uh, but we can still see them quite clearly. It's the brown-headed spider monkey. It only occurs in the Choco here in Ecuador. It's very rare. It is very exciting because we are seeing a female with twins. Uh, a few months ago, we registered the birth of, of uh, triplets. So that's the female that had triplets, probably one died. Uh, this is the first recording of a brown-headed spider monkey with twins. It is very rare for spider monkeys in general having twins. Uh, so for this species, it's the first uh, record. So that's why I'm very excited because uh, knowing that she's fine, that the twins look fine, it is, it is a great sighting today. So as you heard, Citlali is very excited. I think everybody here is super excited. This female has not one but two babies. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And I'm so glad I get to show you too. I think I got good footage. We just took a short break so that they can uh, change the memory cards in uh, in a couple of camera traps they have. They have actually quite a lot of them uh, all around the reserve, especially on pass, because this is where uh, a lot of animals walk by. So they're just uh, checking what images they have, they're checking the batteries, uh, maybe changing the memory cards if needed, and uh, and now we can go. We were going to go to that ridge uh, to get a nice view of the reserve from above um, and, uh, and take some nice pictures, but it's getting very misty and the, the sky is literally white right now and it's blocking the view entirely. So we're just heading back. I think it's, uh, it's time to have a cold beer and, uh, and we'll go out again tonight uh, look for snakes uh, if it doesn't rain. Let's go. It's night time, we just had dinner, and uh, it's been raining all afternoon, almost, uh, but it's not raining anymore, so it's perfect for snakes, it's nice and wet. Um, let's see what we can find. About 30 minutes after we started walking that night, we found a beautiful dwarf iguana resting on a leaf. But unfortunately, the rain never really stopped, and we were quickly forced to go back to camp and call it a night. I hope you can all hear this. It's pouring down rain. I love this noise. 
perfect to go to bed. It's a slow morning today. It's actually uh, it's actually a bit cold. Um, so um, I had uh, a bit of time ahead of me, so I'm just looking at the photos that I took, the videos as well, obviously. And uh, and when the sun comes out, I'll uh, I'll try to do something more more productive, more field like. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at what I shot. Right now, we're on a little walk to go to a big waterfall um, that I've never seen, which is uh, a bit weird because I've been here five times already, but for some reason, I never made it to that waterfall. So I think it would be a, a great place to take some pictures. So we're taking a little break now. Uh, I'm sure you guys uh, enjoyed these uh, these images. I mean, this forest is incredible. It's uh, it's actually one of the wettest place on earth, right? It is, yes, one of the most humid places in the world. Mm. Yeah. So the interesting thing is that is that when people think of uh, rainforest in South America, they think of the Amazon, but this is not the Amazon. It's separated by the Andes, right? It is, yes, and the Amazon has had uh, much more attention <laughs> over the years. I think the Chocó just recently, uh, in the last 10, 20 years, uh, we have had more attention from researchers, from, from tourists even. There are even people in yeah. Quito, which is the capital of Ecuador, that don't know that this place exists. In like Ecuadorians. Ecuadorians. Wow. And it's amazing. It's beautiful. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is it's, uh, there's also uh, uh, rampant deforestation, right? Uh, yes, it's like one of the biggest threats of this forest is uh, deforest industrial deforestation, um, industrial um, uh, timber extraction. Mm. Uh, but also, when this happens, also um, it opens the road for people to also extract timber illegally. Um, and also the expansion of the agricultural frontier mm -hmm. and the plantations of monocultures. Well, it's crazy here and, uh, and actually very sad is that Sitlali was telling me that this, this part of the forest we're walking in right now uh, belongs to a, a logging company. So, um, basically, I, I mean, it, it guess that it means that uh, they could they could take it down anytime they want, but uh, let's hope it doesn't happen.
I just fell over there in the water and my boots are filled with water. Well, that was really worth it. I'm glad I, I came to see this uh, this waterfall for the first time. It was great to take pictures here. It's been raining a lot though, uh, like it's kind of on and off. It, it rains a lot, then it stops, then it rains about half an hour after that, and then it stops again. So uh, it's actually a bit chilly, like not the perfect weather to swim, uh, but uh, just taking pictures and, and having lunch here was uh, was a lot of fun. Now it's time to go. Ariel is a parabiologist in the reserve. He does monkey and uh, bird uh, monitoring, um, and uh, and he's super good at spotting wildlife. I always go out with him at night uh, to look for, for reptiles and amphibians. De hecho, esta noche podemos volver por aquí, verdad? Sí, por aquí podemos bajar lo que es estero bajo. Eh, podemos buscar lo que son serpientes y también lo que son ranas. Y podemos dar la vuelta así por la parte allá, en lo que es una cordillera. Claro. Y podemos regresar vuelta para acá. Claro. Por ahí en esa parte de atrás habíamos encontrado la, la lora, ¿verdad? Sí, por allí atrás era una cordillera. Listo. Perfecto. That was a great day. Uh, nice walk in the forest. Uh, great pictures of the waterfall. We didn't see any wildlife really, but keep in mind this is... By definition, it's hard to find wildlife in the rainforest because, well, because you have so many spots where animals can hide. Uh, it's just harder to spot animals than uh, than in in the savanna, for example. So uh, sometimes enjoying the forest, even without seeing uh, animals, is, is actually great. It's always great to be here, no matter what. Someone was killed here. Guys? 